Phil Gallagher of Thraben U here for another Legacy stream. Now, today I was planning to play a donation deck list, and then I looked and saw that it had full ho four hull breachers, and I went, oh, I didn't prepare for that today. So I decided to just be the bad guy and fire up a stream with Oops All Spells instead. So we are we are just going to try to get people dead on turn one. Just no fear. Hashtag YOLO. Let it fly. In case you're not familiar with this strategy, the overall goal is to put either Undercity Informer or Bluestrad Spy into play on turn one. This mills your entire library. You put three Narc Amoebas into your graveyard and then bring them back via Dread Return. Or sorry, more accurately, you... Put the three Narc Amoebas in your graveyard, and then let, that allows you to cast a Dread Return. You Dread Return for Thassa's Oracle, and since your library is empty, you are then able to go and just win the game on the spot. Now, there's a couple of things that go into this to make sure you don't just fizzle out and die. Number one, there's a pair of Cabal Therapies. This can help you if one of your combo pieces, like the Dread Return or the Thassa's Oracle, is stuck in your hand. Number two, there are Pact of Negations, so in game one, you don't just lose to one counter spell, spell. And similarly, there's Summoner Packs, making it so that instead of just eight payoff cards that allow you to combo off, you have 12. And who was that that just subscribed? Ah, Zotmaster, through a gifted sub. Thank you very much for your support. That will uh, hit our... Uh, sub goal right now of a bonus YouTube video. Um, I think this is basically all I want to say in terms of a deck tech here. The sideboard exists to answer specific problems such as counter spells and hate permanence, but as a whole, we're not going to be sideboarding all that much. Um, YouTube folks, if you're excited about this, please take a moment and hit that like button. It'll help more people find my legacy content, and my numbers have been trending upwards quite a bit because of that little tiny action. It means a lot on my end, or I wouldn't be asking you to do it. Round one, we're on the draw. We have a hand that has one, two, three, potentially four mana, and the ability to just go off. Uh, this looks like a strong keep to me. Oh, green card? You love to see it. Ripu, thank you very much for following. Unless that name isn't French, French, in which case I'm supposed to pronounce the X. Which names are hard, yo. Don't need this fourth Narc Amoeba. Black, blue, green, green. Get him. Yes. I reveal myself, or I target myself. Wouldn't you know it, there are no lands. And our opponent has conceded. I don't even need to, uh, like, go and do the thing here. Excellent. My poor elves opponent is probably going to have, like, four relevant cards in their sideboard for me. Um, so I'm pretty confident that we can just win. Um... So the elves decks can have different sort of things in the sideboard. So we could be looking at discard, we could be looking at um, hate permanence like Gaddock Teague, or um, every once in a while you see something kind of crazy like Deafening Silence creep their way into these sideboards. But honestly, I don't know that I actually want to board anything. Like, I could board Chancellors, but any card that I board is detracting away from my ability to just kill my opponent.
So I think we're just going to whack the submit button and call that good enough. Not 100% sure. Like, I am, I am not an oops master. I have uh, not trained burying myself in dirt in the graveyard and meditating or anything like that. All right, what does this hand do? It looks like nothing, but it could be something. So I have one, two, three mana. With one more mana, I have Spy with Pact of Negation backup. Is that is that good? Um, I have two Narc Amoebas in hand, but if I mill my library, I put two Narc Amoebas in play. I sacrifice one of them to Cabal Therapy, target myself. Hmm. Actually, can I win with two Narc Amoebas in hand? I have one bridge from below. This is awkward. Good. Hmm. No, no, no. Maybe it's okay. Because the Balustrade Spy is the third body. So I go Spy plus two bodies to reanimate. I don't know whether or not this is better than a six card hand. I'm going to go ahead and mulligan. Uh, yikes. Mulligan. Maybe I should have just kept the seven. This one is just incredibly slow. Okay, this looks better. So I get to keep five of these. That's one, two, three, four, plus Chrome Mox. I draw literally any spell, anything I can put under Chrome Mox, and I have a turn one. Okay. Fuck. Double fuck. <laughs> I can't win? Hmm. I was, uh, I was not necessarily expecting Leyline of the Void. Well. Okay. We can, like, try to play this out and, like, actually cast bears, but... No. Not what we're here for. All right, so now I need to board in some number of Force of Vigors and or Nature's Claims. So the question is, like, which one do I want? Or do I want both? I basically don't care about anything they're doing other than... Leyline of the Void, maybe Thoughtseize, and Gaddictig. So I know, like, these four cards are basically free to cut. I don't super need to worry about instant speed interaction. And maybe I should have just cut Chancellors for those in those previous games, although that wouldn't have stopped anything from Leyline of the Void in the first place. Maybe I don't care about Thoughtseize when I am on the play. And I can just keep a couple more answers to a Leyline that way. And then I can consider cutting like a Cabal Therapy or a Cabal Ritual for the last one.
see if that's okay. I think I should be able to win with a single Cabal Therapy most of the time. Cabal Therapy is mostly there for the weird fringe scenarios that can happen where you draw too many of your own important cards. I would like to play first. All right. So this has one, two, three, four starting mana, which means I have a turn one win. Or if my opponent ley lines, I can just nature's claim and then go off on turn two. This will be a keep. Also, I just noticed my sample goal like thing did everything incorrectly. So I'll get that fixed before the next game. But I won't uh, do that live for the YouTube folks. My opponent has mulligan to three. So they are going to just like try to mulligan to a ley line. Yeah, they have mulligan to two. They have mulligan to one. Do you have the ley line? Will you just mulligan to zero? Oh, wow, they just, like, didn't have it after all of that. Okay, uh, just double counting my mana. One, two, three, four, win. Agadim the Undercrypt. I would like to pay three life. Go up to three mana. Cast Balustrad Spy. Target me. Elves players. This is for all those times. All of them. You know what you did. Two time. Um, so looking at what I'm starting with here, I have land, chrome mox, spirit guide, undercity informer. So I can't just go off turn one. However, I can just floop an Undercity Informer into play. And it's just a question of, like, is that good enough? Because, like, a Lightning Bolt, Swords to Plowshares, or something of that nature messes me up. I feel like this is probably okay. I'm going to keep it. I also could just, like, not go off on turn one and wait. I can also Cabal Therapy, target my opponent, and name a common card that would be played. Let's do that. Let's just name something like Force of Will here. Okay. So my opponent has a Daze and a Wasteland that I need to worry about, so I shouldn't just flip this into play. The Daze is a little rough. It punishes me for not just ramming things out there on turn one. I hold my land. Looks like our opponent has stepped away from the computer for some reason. Womp womp. Yeah, so let's just take a second to just talk about some content-related stuff while our opponent gets their pizza out of the oven or whatever it is they're doing. Um, so I ordered a new microphone this week. I got an Elgato Wave 3, um, which is maybe not considered the universal industry standard at this point. A lot of people still default to the Blue Yeti as being just one of the staples. 
But I was talking with Julian and he really highly recommended this. And I watched a few videos and did a little research and I was really happy with this. I still need to get some sort of microphone stand or something like that, but I wanted to pick up the microphone first and just start playing with it immediately and like learning some of the basics about it as far as the settings and stuff go. And then once I've messed around with this for a week or so and kind of know what I want, then I'll uh then I'll order something. All right, uh Summoner's Pact is cool. Uh I still need one more mana. But once I have one more mana, I can play Undercity Informer around days, Summoner's Pact for a Spirit Guide, and then go off. Yeah, uh, so I know it sounds okay right now, but currently, uh, this is propped up on top of the Iliad, the Odyssey, and the Aeneid, which is um, not my long-term solution. It sounds fine if I just put it on my desk, but it sounds better if I get it closer to my mouth. The, uh, the recommendation is it for it to be like two fists away from your mouth. And if I just flop it on my desk, it's closer to a foot away. I mean, I don't hate Thoughtseize here. It's not what I'm looking for, but it's fine. It's resting on a pile of books. Specifically the Robert Fagel's translations of the Iliad, Odyssey, and Aeneid. <laughs> so I, I will get some sort of like arm or stand to do this more formally. Resting on the shoulders of giants. I like that a lot. That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> All right. Um, is it now YOLO time? It might be YOLO time now. So, one, two, three, cast Undercity Informer. One activates, one plays for eight days. I don't think we get much better from here by giving my opponent time. Um, so the real question is, like, do I actually cast Summoner's Pact now? It's weird specifically because of Lightning Bolt. I don't think I do. Because if this just gets Force of Willed specifically, it's pretty bad for me. If I Summoner's Pact. Oh, baby. I like that. I don't like that. So that was a naturally drawn force of will off of that presumably rough all right i can try again in another turn or two again mana is the limiting factor here so with another mana source i just summoners packed for a blue strad spy but this wasteland is really bad for me Okay, yeah, that's a fair point. They might have just, like, valuable blue cards in their hand, and they don't want to fire off the Brainstorm yet, and then they're just fishing to see if they can find something worse to pitch to force. Yeah, that's totally reasonable. Uh, Wasteland's pretty rough. Like, I don't know that I even play this out. I can play it out, and it just does get wastelanded. 
Oh shit, Pack gets green creatures. Pack's so bad. Alright, uh, I'm probably dead. Yeah, you can, uh, you can tell how often I've played Oops. So I have to go off on the next turn. I'm facing 5 damage now, followed by 5 damage the following turn, and nothing I do is going to change that other than just playing out an Elvish Spirit Guide as a blocker. And if I do that, I've lost all ability to potentially combo. This other wasteland may or may not be in their hand at this point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss it. So they're probably past the point in the game where the wasteland matters since they have a like deterministic onboard win next turn. They just need to not lose. So their hand should be full of goodies like force and blue cards. All right, let's go. I would like to pay the life. I am declaring YOLO. Well. Well, poop. <laughs> All right, so now I need to decide how I want to sideboard. The eight cards over here are the things that I can be thinking about. Now, I don't know that I love Xanted Swarm, because our opponent is playing a deck that is pretty likely to still keep Lightning Bolts in as a way to finish me off, or to punish creatures that are played out that I can't activate in the same turn. So I don't know if this is the way to go. I kind of like the Chancellors instead. But I'm not 100% sure. I think I'm going with these when I'm on the play. When I'm on the draw and my opponent has a chance to get things like days and stuff online, maybe I'm supposed to have some of this stuff too. And I think I just want to try to trim some things here that are not mission critical. For example, I don't know that I'm going to need the bridge from below. Maybe I'm trying to win on turn one, so Wild Cantor is something that kind of is good for winning over two turns. So let's get rid of that. Maybe Summoner's Pact is a little bit worse versus Counterspell decks because you just lose. Let's try something like this. So now I'm hoping to try to win on turn one with either Pact or Chancellor as backup. Um, is this doing the thing? So this is turn one. One, two, three mana but no black mana to cast the important card in our hand. Uh, so this one needs to go back. That's unfortunate, because this hand has like basically everything I'm looking for. Okay. So this is Chrome Mox. Put a black creature under it. Dark Ritual, put Undercity Informer into play, pass, activated on my turn.
Yep. This this is fine. I would like to reveal my monster. Don't take that quote out of context, kids. So they would need, like, free spell plus lightning bolt or something like that here. I can't really make use of this Cabal Therapy. Choose me. Sacrifice this creature. Yes, I would like to do that, but I appreciate the prompt. They can do something like Brainstorm, then Surgical Me or something like that, so I'm not 100% to win here. Okay, so I don't have the bridge from below, right? I put that in my sideboard. So that means I can't also Cabal Therapy, so I just need to Dread Return here. I will cast Dread Return, target Thassa's Oracle, sacrifice one, two, three creatures, and I win. Good job, Chancellor. You stole that game for me. So that game showed an instance where you do want the bridge from below, and that's when you have one Narc Amoeba in the graveyard already. But I guess if your opponent has a piece of disruption a good portion of the time, and you activate, you're just going to lose anyway? There's some stuff that that's going to stop. Like, say, a counterspell or something like that that was drawn after you resolved and passed this or something like that. Passed with an Undercity Informer in play. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and run back the the same plan here. Okay, so this is a hand that can produce four mana for Balustrad Spy. Uh, this is 100% a YOLO hand with no protection. So this can go turn one, Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Balustrad Spy, put two Narc Amoebas into play, have three creatures. Oh no, this isn't a turn one because the bridge is in the sideboard. Because I have double Narc Amoeba in hand, I have exactly three creatures and the Dread Return is in my hand. Hmm, okay, so I need to mulligan this one specifically because the bridge is in my sideboard. Lesson learned. Okay. So this is one, two, three, four mana with a pact. The issue is that I don't have a black source. How many black sources do I have to draw towards? Chromox doesn't count. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven. Oh god, only eight? Huh, okay, so this is a situation where I have to wonder, do I draw towards the eight outer, which is a little bit more than an eight outer because of Chrome Mox plus finding another black card? I guess if I pitch a turn timber symbiosis, then Chromox isn't out, and it's a 12 outer to going off with protection. Alright, I'll keep it under that plan. 
but maybe I should just go to five here. I don't know. I don't feel like I'm supposed to beat the Delver deck most of the time. Like we're we're looking to bully the fair decks like elves, death and taxes, maverick, and things like that that can't really interact easily on turn one. We're not looking to beat the up to eight force effects plus days deck. YOLO. We go now. Please. I need it. Oh, yeah. I target me. I pay one. I sacrifice a creature. Yes, I would like to do it. Oh, man. Are we getting the win versus Delver? We can still get surgical and lose. All right, let's go always yes and always yield. I apparently have to always yes those individually. Um, So now I can play around one other spell. I will Cabal Therapy them. I can sacrifice one of these. If they had Surgical Extraction, they already would have played it. I think if they had most counter spells, they already would have played it. Um, all right, they have a brainstorm and a null rod. We just got there. All right, so I would like to cast Dread Return, targeting Thassa's Oracle, and I will sacrifice three creatures. Good game. Feels good to be bad. Round three. And looks great. So, assuming... What if I imprint this? I have... I... Actually, I could just, like, play that, right? So I go... This, Dark Ritual, this, that's enough mana to go off on its own, and I can have either Pact or Thoughtseize up afterwards. Yeah, this is a keep. Yes, that is, uh, that is exactly what happened. <laughs> we have a, uh, a gaming Discord for our school. Oh shit. Dark Ritual, huh? Uh, so there's a chance they don't win this turn. In which case, I win. Okay, so my opponent is playing a version with dazes. Uh oh. I don't want to show them the pact. So they would need like. LED plus another cantrip or like double lotus petal. Okay, it's LED plus another cantrip. We sure do die if I packed. Yeah, but I don't think they uh, scoop to pact of negation. I feel pretty confident about that. 
Um, I'm not going to take the time to clip their list. I should. I just want to get a feel for what I need to be playing around. So my opponent has Daze. They have Force. They have Duress. Those are things that I need to be thinking about. Yeah, but I don't know that they board into flusters, especially if they just like search me and look at my history. They're going to go. This dude, this dude plays fair. I think I like some of this stuff. On the on the play, I can probably just like go for it and win. So I don't actually know if I'm supposed to board these in. I kind of like them on the draw just as a way to slow down my opponent. <clears throat> I do want the thought seizes basically no matter what. I got like baby punished for boarding out the bridge from below before, so maybe I shouldn't do that. I board out like one pact and one cabal ritual. You like Chancellor on the play versus every deck. So if I do that, I'd be boarding out probably like Pact of Negation. Like that would be my easiest cut without really diminishing the power of my engine. I think I like the Pact better. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I haven't played this deck in a hot minute. Like, I don't think I have played this deck since these double-faced lands were printed. This has a lot of mana, but does nothing. We're going to ship this one. We need a payoff card. This also doesn't have a payoff card. Um, okay. What does this do? So this goes turn one. Land, Wild Cantor, turn two, play Undercity Informer. And I can throw back, like, these two cards without hurting the plan. I'll keep this. Um, ice cream. No, I did not check that out. Um, yesterday I watched Bosch and Roll's um, Blood Moon vintage stream. Um, there's some interesting things going on in that one in terms of like combat math. A really cool conversation about him in the YouTube with him in the YouTube comments about whether or not double lightning bolting the onboard creatures was a good line. Okay, um, another mana source is actually exactly what I was looking for. So if my opponent dazes, I think I'm actually supposed to Pact of Negation it, so I can just go off this turn. 
I target me. Pay my one. I sacrifice my creature. Yes. Death to the Undercity Informer. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing some vintage. Um, I'm recording some shops on Monday night with uh, David Lance, um, a.k.a. Static Gripped, who won one of the recent Eternal Weekends. Now you brainstorm? Yeah, it's a little more, um, how do I say this? The vintage version requires you to jump through fewer ho hoops than the legacy version does because Black Lotus is so much better than Lion's Eye Diamond. Nice. And the other really cool thing about the Vintage Breach vid, um, is that it can be such a good value card. So in Bosch and Roll's League that I was watching yesterday where he was playing with a, a glorified Blood Moon deck, he just cast a Breach that was part of the sideboard plan and Incestrolled, I think, three times in the same turn and then passed the turn. And that's like hell a good value for a two mana red enchantment like holy crap that's so good in the mid game so even if you don't just like win with the breach it's like totally fine as a baby yogmoth's will well different yogmoth's will is probably a better way to put that their functionality is different so my opponent boarded in echoing truth and that might just be something they're doing in the dark against like hate bearer and chalice type type stuff that I'm known to play. I don't know that the echoing truths will be in here again. So now my question is, do I want to board differently on the draw? Do I want to have any answers to something that my opponent might board in? And I'm not 100% sure the answer to that. Like, I kind of like Chancellors. They're a speed bump for my opponent, but they're also just, like, not a card that contributes to me winning at all. I don't hate Xanted Swarm. My opponent probably doesn't have too many ways to answer that. Maybe I should board that in when I'm on the draw. And, like... Him the bridge from below in one piece of mana or something like that. Maybe it's supposed to be one of these over a spirit guide. All right. So, how much mana do I produce on turn one? This is one, Chromox is two, spirit guide is three. Summoner's Pact is four. So some way or another, I can attempt to go off on turn one, uh, potentially through a daze even. I play this untapped. I put that under Chrome Mox. This is one, two, three, four mana, and then I have just one card that doesn't do anything. All right, I'll keep this. I don't have protection, so if my oppo opponent mulligans to a disruptive hand, this isn't great for me. But one thing that's kind of cool is that one of their disruptive cards is a duress, which is going to not be able to take the most important card from my hand. I mean, that's how it goes, Nathan. That's, that's just the game. If you take your losses early, your chances of like, having good breakers and making top 8 just plummet.
So Tybalt, let me let me give you a different perspective um, on that card. So I've been playing a little bit of Magic on Arena recently, and playing smaller formats like say Historic with those cards feels really good because it's a little bit of insurance versus flooding. It lets you make your land drops and convert them into spells that can help you win the game a little bit later on, and I've heard great things about them for Limited. So yeah, there it kind of feels bad to power up the glass cannon combo deck in Legacy, but as a whole, I hear a lot of people saying very positive things about them. Uh, so my opponent only has two cards left, so they might have to pass the turn, in which case I just win. Well, you know, they can they can still have free interaction, but it can't be days. So like talking about historic while my opponent resolves their doomsday. So for example, in historic, you could play like a mono white or blue white control deck that plays the land that can produce a bunch of angels. And that can be a realistic win condition option for you, or it can just help you curve out and make your initial land drops. And that side of the equation is really cool. But when you view it as like, this is something that can pitch to Chrome Mox or be played as a land or be cast as a spell, um, then things start to feel a little more questionable. Okay. I would like to pay three life. So now I will Chrome Mox. We'll pitch this card. I will Summoner's Pact. I will get an Elvish Spirit Guide. I will cast a Balustrad Spy. This is pod racing right here. Fuck. They kept a four card hand that was Dark Ritual Doomsday Force blue card. They don't even need to kill me. I just die to my own pact now. Let me go out on my own terms, damn it. Just pass. Just pass. Get the style win. Yeah. <laughs> No, I will not prevent this. Say la vie, so it goes. Um, well, what are you supposed to do there? All right, round four. What are we looking at in terms of an opening hand? So I have land. This doesn't uh, count as progressing mana. Wild Cantor um, just is the same amount of mana. So this can be like one, two, three, four cast and activate under city informer on turn one on the play yeah yolo let's go uh yeah so back with like innistrad and dark ascension and stuff they had the, like the marker cards that you could use and then you could just keep the actual physical card in your sideboard and flip it to whichever one you're going to be using Let's go.
Back in my day, we used to have to drop our chaos orbs from a distance of at least one foot onto our opponent's permanence if we wanted to destroy creatures. <laughs> There's all sorts of, like, great boomer stories about the old days of papers. <laughs> oh, anti. Alright, uh, so... Now we have to decide what sort of deck our opponent is potentially playing and how we want to sideboard against them in the dark. My inclination is to... Like, not really sideboard too heavily, and if our opponent kills us in game two, they kill us in game two. I kind of like some thought seizes to, like, set up one turn and try to go off the following turn. Active negation is not something that's guaranteed to be good against a lot of opponents, so I think I'm going to trim two packs for two thought seizes. No one knows how banding works. No one has ever known how banding works. And there's all sorts of like really weird old templated cards like um a goblin game comes to mind as as just like ridiculous things. I think I played a deck on stream with banding one time. All right, I... Hmm. So this hand is fine as long as I don't draw a Narc Amoeba. Hold on, did I board my bridge out? No, I left my bridge in. Then this is probably fine. I just go Chrome Mox. Chrome Mox. Put a Spy under. Fast Dark Ritual. Spirit Guide gets me up to four mana. I have a Lotus Petal to play around some sort of Daze effect. And... And I get three Narc Amoebas. I use one Cabal Therapy me, target myself, put the Thassa's Oracle in my graveyard. Yeah, okay, this works. My opponent is mulliganing to five. Um, that makes me fear some sort of Leyline effect. Not a Leyline effect. All right, uh, we're playing against goblins. God, I have so much mana. Did we win? Did we bully the poor goblins player? Uh, we have gotten the GG. I'm sorry, Roland, but I'm the bad guy today. This is what I'm here to do. All right, final round. Let's see if we can get a 4-1. Um, looking at the hand, we don't have mana, and we don't have a payoff card, and we have too many Narc Amoebas in hand. Let's mulligan this one. All right, uh, what about this one? So this one lacks a payoff card. It has one, two, three, four, five mana turn one, but I can't actually do anything with it. Um, so unfortunately, this one needs to go back as well. Ah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Yikes. So this allows me to keep this five card hand, and I'm on the play. This would just be like, do nothing, pass, hope to draw land, play Undercity Former, pass, and attempt to win on turn three. Can I do better on four? It'd have to be like, land, dark ritual, other mana source, Undercity Informer, or Blue Strud Spy. 
It's got to be pretty prime. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go for it. So this is four. Yeah, I keep this. So you go back and you go back and you go back. So the question is, do I just jam? Do I just jam and play around a counter spell? So I get to play around something like a daze or a spell pierce or something that requires mana by just going this turn. I don't get to combo off, and it leaves my Undercity Farmer pretty naked in play. But it allows me to play against, play around some common cards. I don't know the answer to this. I'm going to do it. I like casting spells. As they say in the Yu-Gi-Oh world, your move, Yu-Gi boy. What do you got? It can be any number of things. I got it. We'll wait. We'll wait. Um, so we're probably playing against some sort of like punishing Maverick deck. I don't even know if I'm supposed to play this out because of Wasteland. I still don't need to play any of this out because I can imprint one of these and play the other on a relevant turn. I'd like to get a slightly better feel for what my opponent is doing. I mean, that's one way to do it. All right, um, I'm not going to get too much time. My draws need to be pretty ideal, I think, in order to win from here. Scrib Ranger plus Knight of the Reliquary can do some really funky things in terms of putting a lot of land into the graveyard very quickly, while also still getting to attack. I'm likely to take 8 or 9 damage this turn. I want to have gotten one more damage by using a Scrib Ranger on tap. All right. I will throw in the towel there. We really want to win game one versus these sorts of decks. So the next thing we're left wondering is what sort of graveyard hate is our opponent playing? And my guess is probably play lines. Um, rest in peace isn't going to make sense from, the, from their point of view because they are a... Um, Knight of the Reliquary deck, they do care about their own graveyard. 
So that probably means I should bring in some number of Force of Vigors or Nature's claims against this opponent. The thing is that if they're just on Surgical Extraction, those cards are kind of embarrassing. I know that I don't really want the Pact of Negations, so that's the easy board out. And now the question is, what do I do? I think I assume that I try to go off on turn one against this opponent on the play and just board in some of these and then hopefully figure out what plan they're on and then board a little more aggressively in terms of interaction for the next game. The other thing I can do is board out Thought Seize and just bring in a couple more answers or a couple of Chancellors or something. Yeah, maybe on the play, I still just keep a couple more answers to Leyline, because Leyline is going to be one of the few things that probably beats me in a scenario where I am on the play. Let's see what this hand looks like. All right, Chrome Mox, imprint a Cabal Ritual, use this, play this land. So this is one, two, one, two, three, four mana. Yeah, this, this just attempts to go off on turn one. I'll keep it. Um, I have no interaction versus a Ley Line, though, which is really awkward, but... I don't think you throw back the turn one hand. Fuck. All right. That is unfortunate. That's how we're going down, huh? So I have, what, like seven outs to get rid of that? <laughs> so the issue is if they start playing things like Thalia... A shame I don't have like a creature based thing that I can summoners packed up. All right, so let's pay one for the Chrome Mox. And I guess let's put this under it. There's a world where I'm supposed to put a black card under it though, in case this gets wastelanded. Um, but I think I'm just going to get rid of the Summoner's Pact. The Summoner's Pact is just, like, not going to do what I need it to do against an onboard Thalia. Oh yeah, I guess... I guess Ritual doesn't net mana anymore. That would be fine to do as well. Yeah, keeping Pact for Force of Vigor would have been better. Yeah, okay, I don't like my line anymore. Ugh. I think if my opponent can follow up with another hate card, I'm just dead. So they can, like, Knight of the Reliquary Wasteland me. Yeah, this gets Collector Oof. Nope. JK. Okay, just FYI, I think my opponent super misplayed here. So, they can Scrib Ranger and untap the Knight of the Reliquary, use it to fetch up a Wasteland Me, Wasteland Me, taking me off yet another mana source and also sneaking another point of damage in there. 
I don't know that the number of lands that they have in play is actually super relevant so much as like keeping me away from my outs is important. I think though that regardless, this is about the point where I go ahead and throw in the towel. I'm going to play out another turn or two just to kind of like see what they do and maybe talk about some of their lines. But unless they do something with like a very decent amount of mana in this turn cycle, I don't know that their line last turn makes much sense. Yeah, so this is a line they still could have done while wastelanding me. If they're down one land, this still works. And the one damage they get from Dryad Arbor this turn could have been, you know, the one damage from Knight of the Reliquary last turn, which is now two damage compounded over time. Yeah, and now they take the line. I also think you sacrifice the planes there rather than something that gives you two different colors, but maybe that's not super relevant for them. All right, let's debrief. Um, so I was definitely somewhat uncertain about sideboarding with these decks. Um, and YouTube folks, if you have thoughts about sideboarding, um, would love to hear them. So it, it felt like in a lot of matchups, like the Pact of Negations could be slotted out somewhat easily for like Force of Vigors or Chancellors. But if I wanted to bring in more than four cards, it, I wasn't sure what I was supposed to be doing because like everything is a mana source and a couple of times I tried to get away with cutting bridge from below and I got punished for that and at first I was cutting wild cantor but then I realized it's a way to convert green or red mana into black mana and that definitely has a purpose in this deck because I had to mulligan a few hands that had um green and red mana but not black mana and i couldn't get started or i lacked the mana to cast my payoff card um so that's that's kind of one of the places where i'm at what's the rationale for not playing belcher on side i don't know i copied and pasted this list this list was by new hj um it was either like a 5-0 list or a challenge list or something like that from somewhat recently um, so I, I just took their work. Um, I don't know. Maybe a lot of times you're you're hoping to answer an eight, a hate card or play through what your opponent is doing rather than juking via an alternative plan. Uh, something to keep in mind is that Belcher does require seven total mana. And while a lot of times you can get to three or four pretty easily to like cast these things and go off, having the three mana the second time to go off without your, you know, your Belcher getting elked or something like that, or otherwise destroyed, um, that can be a real problem. Yeah, and if you wanted to avoid graveyard hate, you could like not play Force of Vigors and Nature's Claims or something like that, and instead play Belchers. But again, your persistent mana source count isn't super high. So you have these eight plus the Chrome Moxen, and most of the other stuff is one-shot mana. So while you can save up for a second shot, and that's something that the spell lands really improved for this deck, if you're trying to get to a lot of mana to do something again, or to finish doing something that you couldn't do in one turn, sometimes that's a little bit harder. Oh yeah, good luck on the data collection. I'm super glad people are trying that out. Um, okay. Um, YouTube folks, if you've made it this far, you know, please consider liking the video or commenting on it. Help the YouTube algorithm uh, find my stuff and get it into the hands of more people. I would really appreciate that and have a great rest of the day.